Let us pray. Father, thank you for your many blessings, Lord. Thank you for being with Donna and her family and for protecting them and bringing them back home safely. Lord, we lift up Aaron and Adam and we ask that you would continue to be with them. Give them wisdom to make good decisions, Lord. Give Sharon some peace and comfort in knowing that you got them, Jesus, and you will take care of them. Father, bless Miss Ali. Let her know that she's never alone, Lord, that you are always with her and that she's never alone. We lift up our brother Hartley and we ask for healing so that he could come and join, rejoin us, Lord. Father God, thank you for taking Phil home. Thank you for saving him from the second death. And we lift up George and we ask and pray that he knows you and that he is assured of your salvation. Bless his wife, Virginia, and give her peace and comfort, Lord. Father, we lift up the people in Ukraine and Russia and we ask that you would stop this war when you're ready. Just give us patience to trust you. Thank you for your word. And open our eyes and our heart to receive your word as you've given it to us, Lord. And may we not just read your word and listen to discussion, but may, we, may your word become a part of us so that we will apply your word every day to our lives and to share with other people. We ask all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to look at chapters 8 and 9, but just to kind of recap chapter 6 and 7, we learned that, you know, what we already know that Lord Jesus is victorious. You know, his, his, that statement he made on the cross, it is, on the cross, it is finished. That was a victory statement. He did it. And then as Christians, we will be faced with trials and tri tribulations. But Jesus will never forsake us. In the trial and the tribulation, he's always with us. And, and that's what gives us the courage uh, and the faith to continue walking in this world. We also don't you know, give a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. And we must learn to wait on the Lord. Amen. Wait on the Lord. And in fact, in chapter 8, we will learn a little more about that. He will deliver us from whatever we're going through right now. Yes. He will deliver us. And for whatever is to come, he will deliver us. But we also learn that no one will escape the terrors of the end times. No one. But we also learn that God protects his own. He protects his own. And everyone who believes will have a place in heaven. Not only the 144,000, but everyone. And then we also learn that heaven is a place of no more. No more pain, no more suffering, no more disappointment, no more anxiety, no more cancer, no more war, no more hatred. All those negative things does not exist in heaven. And that's what we who believe have to look forward to. And that's why we Christians can rejoice when we die the first death of the body. Because we know, remember Revelations chapter 2 verse 11, we'll be saved from the second death. And that's the final death. Be saved from the second death, and then we were introduced. God, we were introduced to six seals: the white horse, peace, righteousness, and peace; the red horse, danger, bloodshed; the black horse, fear, trade; the pale horse, death, trials, and tribulations, and those who were killed because of their faith in Jesus. You know what an honor to be killed because of our faith in Jesus. And remember the first martyr, Stephen, 
he looked up into heaven where there was stone in him and and he saw heaven's gate open up for him. And we had a, a good description of what the end times is going to be like. So, any thoughts, anything happened during this week that kind of touch you and say, you know, this is what they were talking about. Anybody? You know, a lot of people come to me and who know about my niece and say sorry for your loss. And But I have to remind them I didn't lose anything. I didn't own her. God owned her. And he loaned her. We are all on loan to enjoy each one another's company while we are here. We don't own anybody. He's the one who owns everybody. So we don't lose. You can't lose what you don't own. You cannot lose what you don't own. One friend actually said, I admire how you're handling this. I said, it's not about me handling it, but this is answered prayer. We were praying that the Lord will take, take my niece out of her misery and her suffering. And we know now she's in a place of no more. Praise the Lord. So a time to rejoice. And the word tell us, no more. No more. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? How is Bill doing, Bentley? I've not spoken to Bill except I, I talked to him. Uh, I talked to him a couple of days ago, so I'm not sure how he's doing. When I talked to him a couple of days ago, he wasn't doing too good. Oh, okay. Well, we pray for him then. So in chapter eight, we have. Uh, 13 verses, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six of you. So two verses each, and um, the last person will read three verses. So Jerry, one and two. Beatrice, three and four. Reverend Joseph, five and six. Sharon, seven and eight. Bentley, nine and ten. And Donna, 11 to 13. So when you're ready, just go ahead. Chapter we in, Lincoln? Chapter 8. Okay. Yeah, chapter, chapter 8. eight and... yeah. Chapter 8, we're in chapter 8. Yeah. Let's listen to the word of the Lord. This chapter is entitled The Seventh Seal and the Golden Censer. When the Lamb opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with the fire from the altar, and the hurled on the earth, and there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. Then the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared to sound them. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. 
The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of the water. Don, are you muted? On mute. A reading from the book of Revelation. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded. And the third part of the sun was smitten. And the third part of the moon. And the third part of the stars. So as the third part of them was darkened. And they shone not for a third part of it. And the night likewise. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. All right. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. So, in chapter... Seven, we were introduced to six seals. This is the seventh seal is open. And when the seventh seal is open, what happened in heaven? There was silence. Silence in heaven for how long? Half an hour. You know, some people have a hard time keeping quiet for one minute. Can you imagine half an hour, you know, speechless? Have you ever been faced with a situation and you just have no words to say? You're just speechless. Just in awe, and no word you can say could really describe what you experience. Experiencing, we know what causes us to be. What are some of the things that can cause us to be speechless? Any thoughts about that? Fear. Fear. Yeah. Fear. Anything else? How about being faced with a situation that you don't understand? You have no understanding of why this is happening, what is really going on. Speechless. Now, you can be speechless with blessings too, you know. Can you see that? When your cup run it over and, and you all you... Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But Jerry, read Psalm 46, verse 10 for us. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. You know, when we come in the presence of the Lord, we have to be speechless. And be still in awe of the Almighty God. We can't help it. He is so almighty that it's not a matter of fear, but of worship and respect and adoration. Just be still. I know that I am God. Any thoughts? That is one of the new things I found out here in doing services is that we devote a time for silent prayer. Yep. The silent, yep. yeah, the congregation in silent prayer for the same reason. Be still and know that I am God. Because God would know what's in your heart. You know, and Bentley and I go to the same church, and when we have communion, our pastor will have a time of silence when we can all confess and repent of our sins. So, in verse 2, we, we introduce the seven angels. Notice how that number seven. What did we learn about the number seven? Well, it first appeared in the creation story. 
Okay. God rested on the seventh day. Seven day. What else did we learn about the number seven? Perfect. It's a perfect number. It's a complete. It's a perfect, it's a prime number. It's a perfect number. So, you know, that's why we, I guess when we get lucky seven from, right? It's a blessing, lucky, lucky seven. But seven angels with seven trumpets. Have you ever heard the sound of the trumpet? What a, you know, of all the musical instrument, is the most distinguished, you can't help but reckon that's a trumpet. It's so clear and distinct. That's a trumpet. It's, a, it's got a, a unique sound. And I guess, you know, the Lord has a reason for everything. That's why he gave these angels trumpets. And he didn't give them saxophones or flutes or harps, but trumpet. So that we, when they blow that trumpet, you can't help but hear it. Yeah, and so then, this is, yeah, sorry. I, I spoke of a military funeral. So at the end, they blow the trumpet. Um, I forgot the name of the tune. You know, days done, going to, uh, yeah. There's a trumpet that they have to use. At yeah. The end. It also signals that something is coming. Yep. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get down to verse six. So, in verse three to five, we have a little description here of incense. And, you know, up to today, in some churches, they burn incense. And it helps to create an atmosphere and to remove the distractions of what's going on around us. But incense also has a pleasant smell and, and it kind of camouflage any foul smell that's going on in the place. It, it creates a serene atmosphere that helps us to focus. Uh, and we don't burn incense in our church. Um, I've never been to a member of a church that burn incense, but I know there are a lot of churches that, that burn incense. Some people even do it at home. But it, if it inspires you, if it stimulates you to be in a better mood for worship, do it. Do it. We burn a, we burn a lot of incense. There um, you go. Catholic. Catholic, we we do we burn a lot. Right, of it's a Catholic practice. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? I have um, I have some how you call it when you oh what do you call it thing man? It's a, like an incense really, but on a stick, and you so I I like red heron, smoke heron, right? My wife like it, but she doesn't like the smell. So every time I cook it, I have to burn that incense so it will camouflage the smell of the of the red herring, of the uh, smoke herring. So the incense will cover up our sins, will cover up any distract, remove any distraction. So if it works for you, whatever works for you, as long as it's helping you to worship Jesus, go for it. Go for it. Yep. Then in verse 6, we hear about the sound of the trumpet again. And why do you think the trumpet was a chosen instrument? Why? Why was the trumpet the chosen? Well, it's, it's very clear. Yeah. Very bright and loud sound. Yep. I mean, you're not going to you don't, it's distinctive. Right. You, you know, and uh, I was a cadet. Sharon, remember the cadet? We in Dali, I was a, a cadet and we had a band. And when we went camp, they would, at six o'clock in the morning, we had the wake up call. And it was the sound of the trumpet waking us up. And to me, that's what this is all about. That sound to wake us up to, the truth, because you know we we I remember when I was about seventeen or eighteen, I got a wake up call from my mother. She didn't blow a trumpet, but her words 
but had the same effect. <laughs> I was 17, 18, I was living the life. And she said to me, Lincoln, I'm telling you just how it happened, okay? You are an entity in the South. My mother was a teacher. I said, Ma, what's an entity? She said, you don't do a thing in this house. All you do is eat, sleep, and shit. That's exactly how she told me. So I'm thinking, I didn't tell her, but I'm thinking, what else is there to do? <laughs> you know? But it was a wake up call in that I, because I was the last one with the, in the house with my mama. So I had to help, you know, they spoil me. But that, after that wake up call, I start washing dishes. I start ironing my own clothes. You know, I, I used to finish eat, leave the dish, the dirty dish right there on the table. And I know somebody's going to pick it up. But after that wake up call, that was a, a wake up call for me. And, and that would remind me. Again, it was not the sound of a trumpet, but it had the effect. And we all need a wake up call now and again. We all need a wake up call now and again. And thank God that he sends people or he himself will call the situation in our life to wake us up. That we're going in the wrong path to draw us back to the right road that he wants us to walk on. I'll never forget that, that incident with my mother. What about you? Anybody have any story to share about, did, have you ever had a wake up call? Anybody? There's not a wake up call, but when we, in Naparima, when we had intercall, we use a trumpet to spur the players on, you know, with those, um, those chants that we had, you know. That is, true. Jerry, that is true. That is true. I used to go into cult. That is very true. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. So it was and I was you used to feel that in your soul, down in your <laughs> chest, you're feeling that. Yeah. <laughs> but what you about you personally? Have you ever had a wake up call from a situation or from another person telling you, wake up? I'm, I'm lucky I wake up by myself. Jerry, please. <laughs> please, Jerry. I think Shanti Claire would have something to say. <laughs> Who is Shanti Claire? A crowing cock. <laughs> we, remember, we grew up in the country. <laughs> I'm talking about have you ever had a personal wake up call? where somebody said something to you and you were going in the wrong direction, on the wrong path, and somebody said something to you that woke you up to re and made you realize, I need to change my ways. I, I didn't get a wake up call like that, but I remember my kid's dad, he told them one day he was very mad with them and he says, you know, God gives you a life for a purpose. Otherwise, he was going to make you guys a goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I never forgot it, you know. He says he didn't make you guys a goat. He gave you a, a brain to, to do good things. So, you know, if God had made you guys a goat, I could see why you acted like this. But you guys are not goats. <laughs> Right, and that I thought be, that was a wake up call. Yeah, we were. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it woke them up, but it was a wake up call. You know? <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Are oh, you guys are perfect, good people? You oh, know? I've had I've had many wake up calls, Lincoln. Yep. Um, for and then different different varieties right it's uh you know some are career related some are personal yeah and it and you know sometimes people saying stuff and sometimes it's just a recognition you know hey wait a minute that may not have been the best way to do things yep so um it's a uh, i think getting a wake-up call is a blessing. Amen. The and it's gonna happen. If you if if you if you never get a wake up call, maybe well, 
maybe you're lucky, maybe you're blessed that you haven't got one, but um, it's important to hear it. That's the thing. If you yeah. don't hear, it, then it doesn't do you any good. Yep. You know what the, the Bible said? If you see a brother going in the wrong place, what you should do? Correct him. Correct him. Just to leave them alone is like abandoning. At least correct him. It's up to him now. Eventually just told us whether they're going to take your advice or not. And that's the, as I always like to share, the main difference between a human being and all other creation is that God gave us the gift of free will to choose. To choose whether we would listen and be obedient to him or not. He doesn't force himself upon us. So that was verse six. And I hope going forward, you will be more aware of the voice of the Lord speaking to you and guiding you. And then in verse seven, the first angel, I notice like in every other verse, only a third of the world was destroyed. Only a third was destroyed. You know, and there are a lot of things happening in a world that are similar to what what Paul is, um, John is seeing in his vision, except one thing. I mean, we've had earthquakes, we've had fires, we've had hurricanes, right? Except one thing, not mixed with blood. Yeah. So that indicates that uh, this is something to come. And remember when we first started Revelation, we talked about well, this is what's to come. So not mixed with blood yet. The only time in the in the in the in Bible we we know we learn about blood and the water when Moses turned one of the plagues was to turn the water the for the Egyptians into blood, but that was only in that part of the world, not the whole third. So then a second the second angel in verse eight, so you know. Again, a third, not the whole thing, but a third of the sea and all that was in it was destroyed. And again, we see it was turned into blood. And that's not happening yet. So again, that's to remind us, this is not happening yet. This is what's to come. This is what's to come. And then verse nine and 10 talks about the third angel. And again, a third. Now, why do you think it's only a third and not the whole? What did the Lord promise Noah? Well, he wouldn't have a he wouldn't have a flood again. He would not destroy the whole world with a flood. So a third of the rivers and springs of water were made bitter. And actually, there's a movie called The Wormwood, right? Anybody saw that movie? The Wormwood. Anyway, Wormwood here is a plant. And it's a very bitter plant. And if you have too much of it, it could be fatal. If you use too much of it, it has its benefit. But if you use like any too much of one thing, it's good for nothing. It could be fatal. And here we see that this Wormwood was poured into the earth. And many died. And the fourth angel, again, a third of the sun, moon, stars. I notice that the sun and the moon and the stars are all above the earth, right? Above the land. And a third of the day, a third of the day was without light. And a third of the night, note again, a third, not all of it. You know, and again, it depends on where you live. You know, in, in in the winter, if you're living up in Greenland, you only go, what, an hour or two hours of daylight? Right? Two or three hours of daylight up in the yeah. North Pole, South Pole. Now, when, like in the tropics, we are accustomed to equal day and night, 12 hours of day, 12, six to six kind of deal. 
but in some depend on the where you are, it's not. But the, the word here is saying a third of the, whatever daylight you have, and third of the night. Thank God it's only a third. All of these terrible things that are going to happen is only a third and not all of it. And then in verse 13, when you think you've had the worst things happen to you, <laughs> the eagle warns of worse to come. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Three times he says, whoa, to come. And Jesus did promise us, in this world we will have trials and tribulations, but do not fear. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And if any of us here survive and live long enough to experience this that's to come, that's what we got to hold on to. This woe and all of this total destruction of our Lord is with us. And, and in chapter 9, we will get some more confirmation that he will rescue us and save us, those of us who accept him as Lord and Savior. So that was chapter 8. Any, uh, any thoughts, any comments about chapter 8 before we go into chapter 9? It's just that we have to expect a lot of trouble to come. Well, my dear, I want to tell you, I've seen a lot of trouble in my life already. And no, nothing is guaranteed. And, you know, in this, in this world, see, that's the key. That's the difference right there. In this world, we will have trials and tribulations. When we go to heaven, no trials and no tribulations. And that's where we're heading. And that's where we will spend eternity. You know, I taught Matt in middle school, and we, we taught a straight line is made up of a series of dots, right, Bentley? A straight line is made up of a series of dots. Well, in the line of life from when we were born to eternity, which is never ending, the time we spend on this earth is like a dot. It's like a dot. So, And then I reflect now on the pandemic. It's gone, yeah. So somebody in okay. a eulogy, huh? somebody in a eulogy, if you look at a headstone of a person who's buried, you would see 1950 to 2000 with a dash in between. So Lincoln is talking about a dot, but imagine your whole life on a headstone is represented by a dash. <laughs> yeah, Jerry, that is a, a very awesome and powerful poem, The Dash. Was well, it a the poem? Dash. Yes, it is. It's a poem, The Dash. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, look for it. I'll look for it this week. Okay? All I can right. hardly hear you, you know, Jerry. Huh? I can hardly hear you. Your volume is very low. Are well, we hearing him? Well, yeah, I very well. Your volume yeah. might be I, a little low. Anyway, well I can't play too loud because um. Anyway, so that was chapter eight. Chapter nine has twenty-one verses, so that's we have three and three six of you. Six and the twenty-one is what? Three, three, three six is eighteen and three. So all right, um, Beatrice one to four. Reverend, jo Reverend Joseph, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, Sharon, nine, 10, 11, 12. Bentley, 13, 14, 15, 16. Donna, 17, 18, 19, 20. And Jerry, you get to read the last verse, one, 21. Okay. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason 
of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. They were not given power to kill them, but only to torture them for five months. And the agony they suffered was like the of the sting of a scarf when it strikes a man. During those days, men will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will elude them. The locusts looked like horses prepared for battle, and their heads, they wore something like crown of gold, and their faces assembled human faces. Their hair was like woman's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue had faith his name, Apollyon. One woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more hereafter. Then the sixth angel blew his trumpet, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound on the, at the great river Euphrates, so the four angels who had been prepared for the hour, the day, the month, and the year were released to kill a third of mankind. The number of mounted troops was twice 10,000 times 10,000. I heard their number. And thus I saw the horses in the vision and them and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth, and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, and smoke, and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in yeah. their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and oh. with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders, or their sorceries, or their fornication, or their thefts. Amen. 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 So, in verse 1, we, we are introduced to the abyss, the bottomless pit. And actually, in Luke, um, Beatrice, Luke 8, 31, read that for us, please. Luke 8, 31. Yes. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Uh, and this is the demons. They came out of, the, of hell, and now they're begging Jesus not to send them back there. Why do you think they're begging him not to send them back there? If it was a nice place, you think it you think they would be begging him not to send them back there? Yes, no, maybe? No. 
No, it's a terrible place. A terrible place. They don't want to go back. They don't want to go back. And then Reverend Joseph read Revelation 17, verse 8. Yes, sir. The beast which you saw once was abyss not and will come up out of the abyss and go to his destruction. The inhabitants of, of the earth whose name have not been written in the book of life from the creation of the world will be astonished. When they see the beast because he once was, now is not and yet will come. You know, there are a lot of people who don't believe there is a heaven and a hell. And they will tell you heaven and this is it. There's no heaven. And then there are some people who believe that they're going to hell. And they're not going to go to heaven. It's, it's amazing. The devil is a conniving spirit. And, so, and people who are gullible so easy to be fooled. A young man told me once, I'm going to hell and I'll be driving the bus. And if yeah. hell is so, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to be in for a big surprise. There's no bus. Huh? There's no bus. It's just a saying, Jerry. It's just no. a saying. <laughs> he didn't mean that. He, yeah, he thinks he's being funny when he said that, I'm sure. Yeah. But nobody laughed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, you know, a, a pastor once said, made a statement that I'll never forget. He said, I'd rather live my life believing that there is a heaven and hell, die and find out that there is no heaven and hell, instead of live my life not believing in heaven and hell, die and find out that there is a heaven and hell. But Jesus said in his word, what did he say? He goes to prepare a place for us. Yeah. And, um, and in my father's house, there are many mansions. Many ma and he said, and he confirmed, if it was not so, I would tell you. And does Jesus ever lie? No. No, he cannot. So that's for us. There is a heaven and a hell. He rose up from the dead. He just, you know, our, our, the, our creed, he descended into hell on the third day. He rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. Heaven, And from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And that's where, so I pray that all of you here believe that there's a heaven and a hell. And believe without a doubt that when you die, when you shed this death of the first death, you will rise up to go to heaven and spend the rest of your eternity with Jesus. That's our destination. So then verse 2 talk about smoke from the fire and brimstone of hell. So fire and brimstone is always burning in hell. There's no cool day in hell, you know. <laughs> and, and we've been having some really hot weather this summer, so it's, it's a good sample. It's just a sample of how hot it is down there. We are having hot weather too, eh? Yeah, yes, that's a sample. Just a sample of what's going on down there. And in verse three, we talk about we talk about locusts. And remember the plague of locusts in Egypt? They just destroyed everything in, in Egypt. So. But in verse 4, we said they're given. How much power are they given? Limited power. Limited. And, and they're instructed, only harm the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Um, Sharon, read Job 1.12 for us. You know, you told me 12 1, and I'm like, I'm sorry, Joshua. I am so sorry. And I, I was like, what does he want me to read? It's such a short line. <laughs> I okay. told, I said so 1 12. 1 12. Okay. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath in his 
in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So who's really in control? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. And nobody can do anything that he doesn't want them to do. Even Satan. And we see the evidence with, with Job. And now we, we see in, um, where else in the Bible we talk about a sign? Remember the feast of the Passover in Egypt again? The people were told to kill a lamb and put the on their mantle on the doorway the blood so that when the angel of death came, he pass, would pass over. Pass over. He will pass yeah. over. A sign. You know, and I'm in some religions today. Uh, I know the Hindu religion, my ancestors uh, were Hindu. The 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 women especially, and I have noticed of late. Maybe Reverend Joseph can help explain this to us. Yes, Some yes. men also have a red dot on their forehead, mm -hmm. and when you a woman has a red dot, that's a sign she's married, spoken for to a man. Stay away. And similarly, the man is married. Don't touch. Don't touch him. He belongs to somebody and she belongs to somebody. Similarly, when this vision becomes reality, they, we will have a sign. We too who believe will have a sign indicating that God owns the you. Leave that person alone. Don't touch them. Don't mess with my people. Is what he's my children. The Lord is my shepherd. Yea, do I walk to the valley of the shadow of? Yeah. That I will fear no evil because I got his sign on my forehead or wherever he put it when that time comes. So, uh, John 6 27. Jerry, would you read that for us? You're reading from John chapter 6, verse 27. Verse 27 says, Do not work for the food. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seed. Eternal life. That's what we have waiting for us. And then Ezekiel 9, 4. Beatrice, would you read Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4 for us? Ezekiel 9, chapter 4. Sorry, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse... Ezekiel chapter 9, 9 verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city to the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abomin abomination that be done in the midst thereof. Again, a sign, a mark. A mark. You know, the devil has his own mark. And his followers will have his mark. But we are Jesus, owned by Jesus. We, the mark of the Lord. Um, You know, I used to like to watch Western movies when I was much younger. I still, now and again, when I have some time, I would catch a, a good Western movie. And the farm, the ranchers, they will brand their exactly. livestock mm -hmm. to indicate that this livestock belong to the farmer, the rancher. And it was a crime to steal another man's livestock, right, Bentley? It was a crime. They still do that. Yeah. That, <laughs> that branding, yeah. So we got the brand of the Holy Spirit on us. Amen? Amen. And oh amen. my goodness. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, and then verse 5, they were not given power to kill. Only torture for how long? Five months. Five months. Five months. Only torture for five months. You know, well, again, while we are going through this torture, we all remember it's only for a season. It's not forever. It's only for a season. You know, 
And, and the disciples, they asked Jesus, strengthen our faith. While we are going through these times, strengthen our faith, Lord. What a powerful prayer. Strengthen our faith. Help my, be I believe, Lord, help my own belief. Because I don't know about you, sometimes when things happen, I have doubt enter my mind. And that's when I go back to the word. I believe, Lord, help my own belief. Remove this doubt from my mind. Strengthen my faith. When do we need strong faith? When? Hello? All, all the time. <laughs> all the time, but when mostly? In troubles and trials and tribulations. Yeah, when we're going through some tough times, oh, yeah. tough trials and tribulations. Yeah. So, verse 7, we have a, a de detailed description of the locusts. But notice again, they had limited power. I know that the description uses the word like and as a lot. And then in verse 11, we hear about Abaddon, or a, also known as Apollon, which is Satan, the destroyer. He, you know, does Satan do anything good? No. His, you know, his sole purpose is to destroy, to separate us. From because you know, remember, he was Lucifer was one of God's right hand angels, so he knows what heaven is like, and he doesn't want us to to experience what he had lost. So he will do anything to separate us, to confuse us. Well, yes, Beatrice. You go, before you go on, um, recently we started having swarms of locusts in our area mm -hmm. and they will eat out a whole big tree yep in minutes they even mm -hmm. eat in bamboo and all and the what? bamboo when they when they when they land on the bamboo i was hearing the bamboo cracking mm. bamboo was actually breaking under the weight of the locusts and, and uh, yep. it was fright it was frightening for me yeah, and I, I was praying that they wouldn't come down and start to eat my plants, but my plants were <laughs> too oh. low down. <laughs> they were too low down. They were attacking all the trees at the top. And and you see the third and the Lord protect your plants. Yes. A third. I'm uh, happy about yeah. that. Beatrice, when I remember when I was working in Princess Town, huh? Uh, we collected one or two of them. They were over six inches long. They, and we, we were told that they were coming from Venezuela. During um, some... Mind you, these locusts are not big, eh? Oh, yeah, yes. but we, we, we not caught a big, few. big one. Like, like two like inches, yeah. Two inches, yes. Yeah. Yep, they seem to be getting popular in Trinidad. Yep. Yeah, and they're very pretty. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, very, very pretty. This deception, <laughs> deception again. Yeah, but look, some John the Baptist. What did he? What did he feed on? Locust and Lucas. wild honey. Yeah. So verse twelve, talk about the first woe is past, but two more woes to come. Two more woes to come. And we don't know what they're going to be. We don't know when. But that's where our faith, God knows. God knows. But we know whatever is to come, he will protect us. He didn't create us to destroy us. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Good night. Good night. I know the plans I have for you to prosper you, yes, not you. to harm you, yes, and to I give you hope. Hope, for the future. hope for a future where? Where is our future? In heaven. In heaven. That's where our future is, in heaven. You always remind yourself every day, this is not it. My future, our future is in heaven. And then in verse 13, we see the sixth angel. And when the river Euphrates is mentioned, and that's a real river. Um, who did that? Donna. 
for Bentley, Genesis 2.14, and then Donna, I'd like for you to read Deuteronomy 11.24. Okay. Let me spot it here. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. So this is a real river. John is not making this up. And um, Donna, Deuteronomy 11.24. Unmute, unmute, Donna. Unmute, Donna, unmute. Yeah, she has a, she has a microphone. Yeah, I'm now looking for it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will, okay, going future, when I give you a verse, please look, look it up and mark it by yeah, verse. Know you, you now gave it to me. So it's 11. I'm, I'm getting through. Don't you worry. I got it. 11 verse 20. Mm -hmm. 24. Oh, 11 verse 24. Mm -hmm. I'm reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Verse, book, chapter 11 verse 24. Every place whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall you, your coast be. So this river is a real river. Yeah, and then Euphrates is a real river. And huh? it, is, it is still there in Iraq. Yes, it still no. is. It still is there. Yes, it is. Okay. Then verse 14 and 15, no, this is a a powerful message here. This, this said the four angels of death are released to kill a third of mankind. And this they were these four, they were bound for a season for a time, set aside, prepared for their role, which was to kill a third of mankind. Every one of us has a purpose. What's your purpose? Why did God create you? Hello? Why did he create you and me? One person, one person at a time, please. Beatrice? To serve him. To serve to him. Me. What to else? Know, to know him, to love him, to. and to serve him in this world and the next. Jerry? Um, I guess I didn't answer that question. What was the question? What, what's your purpose? Why did God create you? To love and to serve him. To love and to, and to glorify him and to worship him. And to worship him and to glorify him. And to do his work, which is to draw others to him. To draw others to him, to lead others to him. You know, people, I want, I'm, I'm going to pause this recording because I, I don't want to I'll see the so in the four angels, then in verse 16, well, what were the number of troops? 200,000. When you add it up, it all comes up to 200 million. Do you know of any military in any country in the world today that has 200 million? Troops? No. No. Only God alone. God alone. Yeah. And then in verse 17, we get a detailed description of the horses and riders. You know, spit fire, smoke, and so you know, and, and this could cause a, a lot of scary stuff, right? But we are saved from all of this. We got to always remember, saved from all of this. And remember. Paul, John, I saw in my vision something to come. Not happening yet. It's something to come. And there's no guarantee that you and me and all of us here would live until that time. Maybe we'll be looking down from heaven. So that's why we got to lift up our children, our grandchildren in prayer. 
and those who don't know Jesus yet. And notice again, what a third of mankind is killed in verse 18. And where were the and verse 19, where were the power of the horses? Where were they located? In their yeah. mouths and in their in tails. In their mouths and in their tails. Yep. Yep. Then now I want to read this verse 20 and 21 for you again. I think this is a strong talk about a wake-up call. This is a strong message to us. Verse 20. The rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. They did not stop worshipping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood. Idols that cannot see or hear or, talk or walk. Nor did they repent of their mothers, their magic arts, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. That's a wake-up call for you and me. Just if we, you know, these are the things we don't want to do. It's clear, listed there, the things we do not want to do. There are people today are still worshiping idols, made of stone, that cannot walk, cannot see. And then some, some of well, I, I don't, I've never killed anybody, but I thought about it sometimes. And <laughs> Jesus said, you know, if you think about it, you've done it. So repent for all our sins. Repent. You know, and these are specific things that we got to analyze ourselves and say, what of these things am I doing? I need to stop doing. In life, there are things that we do in the right thing we need to continue doing. Then there are the wrong things that we do we need to stop doing. And then there are some new things we need to do that we need to start doing. And you know, you all know yourself, you all are intelligent people. We all need just to be honest with ourselves. So that brings us to the end of chapter nine. What stood out for you tonight? What was your, did you get a wake up call? Yes. Tonight? The wake up call came from John the Baptist at the beginning um, of, I would call it Jesus' ministry or the beginning of the gospel. Repent and be baptized. Right? And at the end here, in the verses you read, huh, we are talking about repent, you know, which is a very, very crucial part of our Christian life and that we have to keep on the straight path by repenting. John the Baptist said it at the beginning and now we're hearing it in the revelation of John the Divine. Yeah, and you know, repenting is not just simply saying I'm sorry. But repenting is, I'm sorry, would you forgive me? That's at a certain higher level of sincerity to your repentance. Lord, I am so sorry. Would you forgive me? Would you forgive me? He promised us if we repent, he would forgive us, but he knows our heart too. We can't fool him, you know. We might even be able to fool our own selves and think we're repenting, but we can't fool him. So it's be sincere. And don't think about big things. I know none of you are criminals, none of you steal, but as of the world, think about how we disobey the Lord. How we drop the ball, how we don't, when he presents us with opportunities to serve him, we don't grab the opportunity and, so, and do what he tells us to do. When we don't listen to his voice or for his voice, Forgive me, Lord. I got distracted. Because I know all of you. 
I know none of you here ever killed anybody. Maybe you told a little white line on one again. But there are things we do that, you know, is not of this world, but of the Lord. And be more aware. Know what to stop doing, what to continue doing, and what to start doing. Any other thoughts? Thank you, Jerry, for sharing your wake-up call. I hope we didn't just waste an hour of our lives and we didn't learn anything tonight. I'm sorry. All right, but what stood out for me was that the time will come when there will be a seal of God on, on the foreheads. Yep. And um, we'll be protected. Yep. What's the indication of that seal? What does that seal of God send to the people who will see it? Ownership. Ownership. Don't mess with this person. Mm -hmm. They belong to the Lord Almighty. Don't even think about it. Yep. Even the Depends. devil, even the devil can't touch us when we have that seal of the Lord upon us. Thank you, Beatrice. Anybody else? Repentance stood out for me um, in a personal way that I need to, I don't know if to call it a wake up call. I'm not certain. Um, I need to pay more attention to my repentance with the Lord to ask for forgiveness, to move forward. You know, it's not just a praise, worship, ask for favors, thank you, right? But to repent because I am a sinner, right? And that did stand out to me, especially 21 that Jeremiah read, you know? So the repentance, that struck a chord with me. Thank you, Donna. Anybody else would like to share? Whenever I get thoughts in my mind that is not of God, I, I always say, God, I'm I'm so sorry for even thinking these evil thoughts, you know. Yeah. So Yeah, on that note, Sharon, we all have a computer, right? Yes. On every computer on the keyboard, there is a delete button. Yes. What do you delete? Trash. Trash. Useless thing, junk. They even have a trash can where the, where it goes to. Similarly, yeah. uh, like what you just said, I don't know where these thoughts come from. I don't have no control over the thoughts that come into my mind. What I do have control over is which thought I will entertain and which thought I would delete. Yes, absolutely. Which thought I would I would delete. And then you know we, we did a study of knowing we know what God, who God is, and what how what His way is like. And so the earlier we recognize this is not the, of the Lord, this is of the devil, delete. Because if we start thinking about it, people, what's going to happen? We're going to fall. We're going to start believing it and then, oh, that sounds good. I'm going to do that. Hit the delete button. Thank you, Sharon. Anybody else? So... <laughs> Well, yes, one thing real quick. This. Yeah, the 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 verse about the the idols. <laughs> right. Yeah. And 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 he's not just talking about idols that are carved <laughs> to dying. to gods or something like that. Right. Anything can be an idol. Yep. Money. Money. <laughs> fame. You know, reputation. Yep. Things are idols. Yep. Anything that stands between you and Jesus is an idol. Anything that we put before him is an you idol. What's that, Jerry? You worship acquisition of money, you worship all the different things, and it comes between you and your relationship with the Lord. Amen. So thank you for sharing. Um, couple just to remind us, 
it's good to be silent sometimes. It's good to be silent sometimes. You don't have to say something about everything. Be sad. And then spend more quiet time with Jesus. That's something I'm, I struggle with a little bit. I need to be, just be still. Just be still. And let him speak to me. And then the incense can help us get in the mood for worship if we need it and help us to focus if we need it. The sound of the trumpet is a call to attention, a wake-up call. And always remember, evil, the devil has limited power. Has limited power. He can only do what God allow him to do. And then God's people will not be destroyed. We become God's own. How do we become God's own? By repenting and accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And, and that's where some people who struggle. You mean it's that easy? All I have to do is say I'm sorry and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Well, if you're genuine about it, that's all right. My yoke is light, what he said. My yoke is light. So, and then verse 6, the sixth item, trials and tribulations for God's people will only last for a season. Will only last for a season. And we've had situations in this world, you look at the history book, how many wars, seven-year war, hundred years war. Right now, we don't know how long this war in Ukraine and Russia is going to last. But it's for a season. We know it's not going to last forever for a season. Afghanistan was 30 years. 30 years. And they're still fighting. Yeah. So everything is for a season and remember that and always remember who is in control? The Lord. The Lord, the Almighty. Donna, since you've been away for so long, would you kindly close us in prayer tonight? I will, certainly. Heavenly Savior, we come before you tonight thanking you for today, thanking you for the gift of life. Thank you for waking us up, for waking up our families, Lord. Lord, we thank you for an awesome day, for the many blessings, those we know and those that we don't know, dear Lord. Dear Jesus, as we go through another week, Lord, Lord, help us to put you first and anything else after, Lord. Your word says, Lord, that no plague shall come, shall come nigh your dwelling, Lord. And, Lord, we stand on your word, Lord. And, Lord, we stand on your word that no weapon formed against us will prosper, Lord Jesus. And, and any tongue that riseth up in judgment, Lord Jesus, you will condemn heavenly Savior. And, Lord, we create all our opportunities to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, go before us this week. Straighten every crooked path, Lord Jesus. Send your angels to lift us up, Lord, to protect us, Lord Jesus, lest we dash our foot against a stone, Lord Jesus. O oh, Heavenly Savior, Lord, we worship you and we give you praise and glory, for there is no other king like you. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, Lord, amen, amen. Lift up Hartley in a special way, Lord Jesus. Lord, touch him, Lord. Touch Hartley. He's one of our, he's a member of our family, Lord. Lord, touch him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, Lord Jesus. Lord, your word says that healing is the children's bread, Lord Jesus. Lord, we rebuke all manner of sickness from Hartley's body. Lord, strengthen him and make him whole once again so that he would come again to worship you and praise you and enlighten us and, and give us words of wisdom, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, people, have a great week. Um, Please make an effort and read chapters 10 and 11 before we meet next Wednesday and take little notes of what it's saying to you. I'd like to see more people sharing what the word is saying to you personally. Okay? Yes, sir. Good, Good night. night. Good night, everybody. Good night. 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 Good night.